Hey guys, it's Ross, and in today's video, we're going to be talking all about strawberries. Uh, there's so many types of strawberries. There's actually so many colors of strawberries, too. There's even white strawberries. You can see some of my prior videos here. Uh, we did a t uh, strawberry taste test of some varieties that I grew. Here's a white strawberry here. They call them pine berries, which actually are white strawberries. They get this pinkish hue to them. But uh, they're called pine berries because they taste a lot like pineapple, and they really do. Um, I've had other strawberries out there. Uh, there's some now that are coming in that are purple that should have a more complex, interesting flavor. There's also alpine strawberries we're going to talk about, which have a really intense bubblegum strawberry flavor. There's even white uh, alpine strawberries. And then there's even something called uh, musk strawberries, which is another type of strawberry that are really, really good. Um, so there's a whole world of strawberries out there that we necessarily don't know about and that's kind of what the point of this video um, Before we get into all the different types and all the different um, You know all the different colors and all that I Want to just say that strawberries are the one of the easiest things that I grow. Uh, I grow a lot of different things um, For a perennial in terms of perennials. It's seriously one of the easiest things like you plant it and you're done you harvest strawberries year after year nothing bothers them you know they're gonna be there every single year without fail they're extremely cheap to, to buy and plant and maintain I don't water them I don't care for them um, I do almost nothing to them and they just they, they give me incredible amounts of strawberries year after year to the point where I get sick of them they're also the earliest fruit of the year in my uh, Philadelphia, greater Philadelphia area garden and orchard. They are the first fruit of the year. Um, you know, they the June bearing varieties, they'll fruit for me actually in mid to late May and then finish off in early July. And then there's a little bit of a break, and then I have something called ever-bearing and, and day-neutral strawberries, which we'll go into later. Those fruit, fruit for me from August, the beginning of August, all the way to the end of the year. And I get about three months, three solid months of production out of those strawberries. So really impressive uh, plants. I just cannot believe that more people are not growing them. Um, they're also way better than the store, like I said, and they're way cheaper than the store. Um, it just doesn't make sense. If you like strawberries at the store, if you think strawberries are one of your best fruits, one of your favorite fruits, and you've only eaten a store-bought strawberry, I think you would go nuts. I think you would literally go nuts when you tasted a homegrown strawberry. I think you would genuinely... <laughs> You would jump up for joy and say, oh my god. And then you would get a little depressed because then you've realized your entire life, however old you are, haven't been eating homegrown strawberries for that length of time. And then uh, hopefully that would pass and you'd be eating, you'd be go back to eating more strawberries. But um, anyway, guys, let's kind of get into the different types of strawberries, right? There's the very typical type that we're all used to. We see at the store all the time. Um, you know whether they're June bearing, ever bearing, or day neutral, uh, they're all kind of the same thing, right? They're a bit larger, they're red. Um, these plants send out runners, so if you're, you know, you are familiar with growing them, you plant them in the ground, and that plant then kind of clones itself and runs along the ground. That's why they call them runners, and then they root themselves in the ground and create new plants and. They'll take over an area as a ground cover. Um, they don't need a whole lot of light, right? You can get away with four hours of light. Um, you know, they're, they're ground covers in nature, so they don't really even uh, like a lot of sun. In fact, um, they do like a lot of water, so make sure that you are watering them if you live in a, a drier climate. For me, I don't have to water them one little bit. But, uh, you know, make sure that you guys are taking care of them. Uh, but for the most part, they, they take care of themselves. There is some disease pressure that may happen in very humid climates. 
Uh, you can pretty much grow them though anywhere in the United States. And you know what? You'll have food every year for the rest of your life if you take care of that strawberry patch. Um, so that's the typical strawberry that we're used to. And in the store, we're used to a really large red firm berry from Driscoll's or some other strawberry company that uh, really puts out a pathetic... I really do think they're pathetic. Uh, I, I don't eat store-bought strawberries anymore. Uh, I'm spoiled, you know. Maybe I'm a little bit of a snob for saying that, but it's true. Uh, after eating store, after eating homegrown strawberries, the difference is so great that I will refuse to eat them. So they're very firm. I think that's one of the biggest reasons why they do so well um, commercially. Right? Is that they can store a lot longer. They can hang out on the shelves a lot longer because they're firm. But because they're firm, they don't really have the best texture to them. And this is where you can get a little creative and really special with the varieties that you choose to grow at home. You can choose varieties here like Mar de Bois. This is a really incredible tasting strawberry from France that is actually on the firmness scale somewhere in the middle. Um, you got the store-bought strawberries at the top. Mara de Bois and similar firmness strawberries somewhere in the middle. And then you've got things like alpine strawberries, which we're going to talk about in, in a second here. But those are the least firm. And the softer they are, the more they melt in your mouth, right? They're like eating, you know, an alpine strawberry is closer to eating like a, like a raspberry in terms of softness, right? Um, the strawberries that you guys get at the store are just they're just too firm to really be that enjoyable um, not only that but the the flavor that you guys can choose from these varieties so Mar de Bois to me has more of a wild strawberry flavor almost like bubblegum almost a, a really complex interesting berry flavor that kinda tastes to me like a like a Concord grape they kinda taste like grape juice if you can believe that uh, they taste like they taste like Welch's grape juice. I'm not gonna. I'm not. That's not even an exaggeration. That's not like, you know, you don't have to be a sommelier or a wine taster to come up with that. I mean, that's really is to me what they taste like is bubblegum and Concord grapes. So they're really really tasty, right? And they also have a nice firmness to them that isn't too soft, but it also isn't too firm. So this one I really really love, and I have this variety and a whole patch of them in the front of my house that's it does so well there um, it gets a lot of sun there as well and I recommend getting your your strawberry plants if you're gonna get any strawberry plants get them from Norse farms guys they really do offer the best strawberry plants they package them up in 25 uh, bundles and I do the same thing I kinda stole their idea I've sold some strawberry p uh, plants in the past and they bare root them right they rip them out of the ground shake off all that soil and rubber band them in 25 little bundles put them in a plastic bag and then store that in your fridge and you can keep them in your fridge actually for quite a bit of time without them you know really taking any damage um, so that's what I recommend is uh, getting them from this company they really do a wonderful job with strawberry plants I'm, I've always been thoroughly impressed by them um, and they're also cheap, right? This is a really affordable price for 25 plants. You can buy one plant, as an example here on Burpee, one plant for $13.69. That's crazy. So I recommend getting yourself some Moire de Bois, getting yourself also an Everbearing or a Day Neutral type and a June bearing type. So the June bearing type that I recommend is called Rucker's Scarlet. This is a new variety coming out of the Rucker's breeding program. I'm trying this one here in my garden. We'll get a really good yield, I think, this year. A good idea of what this uh, variety is about. Last year and for a couple years now, I've been growing a variety called Early Glow, which is also exceptional. But I have a feeling Rucker's Scarlet is going to be a tastier berry. It's also firm, 
So for those of you who want to sell these berries, you could um, you could probably sell this variety. Um, you know, they they should have a really exceptional uh, flavor to them. And this is what I'm trying to get at here is that you need to have a June bearing strawberry patch and an ever bearing strawberry patch. You'll have strawberries all year that way. So that's what I'd recommend is just getting the two of them to have successive ripening that way. Um, let's see. There's also another strawberry out there of your typical type. We're still on the main types of strawberries, right? The, the ones we see at the store. That species of plant. The Garouguette strawberry is another variety from France, I believe, and is just another incredible tasting variety that I'm really trying to find, but I can't get a hold of it. A lot of growers really love this one. If anyone has a source for me that I can find this and get it myself, I'd love to grow it here. Um, but some other varieties I'm going to try is the Purple Wonder strawberry, which is uh, bred at Cornell. Um, again, it's purple. And we've talked, we kind of touched about, touched on this a little bit, is that the color really does determine the flavor. Uh, as in the case with the pine berry or the white strawberries, they really do have a more mild and pleasant flavor that's like pineapple. I mean, this is literally, they're not, they're, they're exactly right. This is exact, this is a great description for it. So, you know, certainly, um, Figure this out for yourself in terms of like, you know, what firmness you guys like and what colors you guys like. But, you know, I would also recommend try a different wide variety of colors, you know. Get yourself a, a strawberry patch that has purple strawberries, red strawberries, uh, white strawberries. The purple ones are supposed to be probably I would imagine I've, I've never even had a, a purple strawberry before even heard of somebody who's tasted one but they have got to be really good I'm sure they're more musky maybe a bit more intense in flavor kind of like uh, approaching raspberry in terms of complexity you know and along those lines right so that's what I'm gonna be doing is trying a, a couple of different ones putting them together in a patch like that um, another type of strawberry that I recommend, and this is a different species of plant, these are called alpine strawberries, and there's red alpine strawberries, there's also white alpine strawberries, and these are incredibly, incredibly good, guys. I'm not kidding. Um, alpine strawberries, though, are about the size of your thumbnail. They also behave a little bit differently, right? Um, the plant doesn't send out runners, they don't multiply themselves. Uh, they don't take over your your lawn if you let them these will Only grow in like bunches and they kind of expand as time goes on and that's about it You know, they pretty much they'll stay about One and a half to two feet wide in diameter You know like two feet by two feet and that'll be it you can dig them up and divide them and spread them out You can also propagate these from seed, which is really cool. So you know, experiment with this stuff, guys. See what is going on with these different types of strawberries. Um, again, they are the size of your thumbnail, but they pack the most punch of any strawberry I've ever had um, by far. I would love to do a little bit of a taste test video and get people's reactions. Like, I could get just random people on the street, feed them a, an alpine strawberry, and you know, assuming they've never had a homegrown strawberry before, let them eat that and see the reaction. I bet you would be insane. I I, I seriously think they would uh they lose their minds because they really are that good. They taste like bubble gum. They've got that Concord grape berry flavor to them that the Mar de Bois strawberries have, but even more intense, even more powerful. Uh, they're they're just nuts. They really are. Um, and they yield pretty heavily. This is one variety here called Ren de Valais, another French variety. You know, you may think I have some kind of affinity with France, but I don't. It's just that they really care about their, their food. And they really have a, a great strawberry um, varieties over there. They also have great melon varieties. They have great figs over there. Um, you know, France really knows their stuff when it comes to food, contrary to some beliefs 
So this is one variety that I recommend. It's it's a bigger berry um, than most alpine varieties. And you know what? It's also more productive. Um, the white sole alpine is also one that I've, I've heard lots of recommendations on. Uh, this one's white and has an interesting flavor to it than your typical alpine strawberry. I'm interested to try all these, right? I'm trialing different varieties myself to s continually see what's out there because I know how interesting some of these strawberries can be. Uh, we also have here a PDF that Mike at the straw the strawberrystore.com has created. I think he's going out of business. I don't know, but I wish this guy was still around. And he basically trialed so many um, Alpine strawberries and came up with two that were really good. Ren de Valet was one. And uh, Bolenzauber is another one. This one's from Germany. So uh, really interesting. And, uh, you know, it's worth looking into, right? I, I personally have just a, a number of just any old alpine strawberries in my yard and I wish that I had paid more attention to the variety itself uh, because now I'm going back and having to buy different varieties propagate them from seed and um, and all that you know so there's a lot of variety out there for sure with the alpines as well another variety of alpine or I believe this is more similar to an alpine strawberry in that it doesn't send out runners it's more of a compact plant you know, you, you spread them out by division or from seed. These here are called the, the, the uh, temptation strawberry, um, but they're a bit larger, right? They're similar to the alpine in flavor, but they're a bit larger, a bit more firm. Um, I'm interested to see what, what these guys can do. And then lastly, we have something called a musk strawberry. And uh, musk strawberries are really interesting. Um, you know, they have a really musky, that's why they call them musk, is that they have a weird, fragrant, kind of like dark berry flavor to them. Um, this website says they're like wild strawberries. I kind of agree, right? Kind of like that alpine strawberry flavor, um, that bubblegum, concrete grape flavor. And then they say it's similar to a currant which is nuts to think about. So, you know, cultivated in Italy and some name selections exist, blah, 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 blah. Um, the thing about these guys, though, is that they need a male. They need some pollination from, uh, from the male to pollinate the females. They're probably less productive that way, but it says here that um, they're fine in light shade and as a ground cover, they're vigorous, but they don't overcrowd and... The runners cannot pierce thick sod or established beds, which is really cool. So you can kind of plant these guys, I guess, and they won't take over your yard like a regular typical strawberry could. But inevitably, if you're going to be growing fruit in your yard, you need to be taking care of that stuff anyway. And strawberries are just really not that difficult to control. So if you're on it on an annual basis, you should have no problem. Um, but yeah, here's another different type of strawberry that we're, I'm going to try this year and see what I can get out of this. But isn't that really, really cool? I mean, it's just such a cool, interesting little thing here that I showed you guys. Um, totally nerding out about strawberries. So if you guys really enjoy strawberries, um, you know, watch my prior videos on them. Give this video a thumbs up. Give me a little subs uh, subscribe there. I'm sure there's even different varieties or different types of strawberries that I haven't even mentioned. I think there is. There's one other one that I'm I'm blanking in the name of that they grow in, um, I think, Europe. And it's just now coming into the United States. I'm blanking on the name. If anyone has the name of that one, post that one in the comments and I'll, I'll, pin, your, um, I'll pin your comment to the top so people can know. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this one and, uh, and take care.